This is the last tutorial looking at the MoGraph color shader and uh, we're going to just look at a slightly different usage for it. Um, using the same technique as before, it's just to give you an idea of um, you know the various applications. To do this you need to open up the light bulb start scene file. You can see we've got a whole bunch of light bulbs cloned around a circle um, and we're going to just double click to create a new material. Let's call this one light bulb and just drag and drop this onto the bulb glass object like so. Select that material. We're going to keep this fairly simple. I'm going to switch to the basic tab, just enable luminance and let's just switch off all of the other channels for now. And under the luminance channel, let's add in our good old MoGraph color shader. Okay, when we render now, we have this not very interesting looking scene. Select our cloner object. Let's come up to the MoGraph menu, choose Effector, and this time we're going to add in a shader effector. So by default, the shader effector actually uh, is essentially white, even though it doesn't have anything in the shading tab here. By default, um, with the effector minimum at zero and maximum at 100 is white. Um, what we want to do under the parameter tab is just switch off the scale option. Um, and you can see that with the shader effector, the color mode defaults to being on. Switch over to the shading tab and let's choose to add some noise. Okay, if we come in here, um, let's choose something like FBM, which is Fractal Brownian Motion. Um, and we set the scale to be 10. Okay, and let's put some animation on here. So set that to be two, say. And I'm gonna set the space to be object. Okay, and if we now press play, you can see, hopefully you can see, because we've got such a small noise and it's animating, we get this kind of nice flickery effect. But the problem is here, obviously the noise is going between black and white or gray values really. Um, and all of the light bulbs are now looking a little bit gray. So we can come back to our material and under the uh, luminance tab, let's set the brightness here to be a little bit higher, maybe 200. We don't see any difference, but if we multiply our color shader on top of that, now you can see the difference. And I think by choosing a value of 200, it's much too high. Maybe we just go a bit lower, maybe 140. Um, and still can't really see the effect, 120. Okay, there we go. And hopefully you can see that, that they're kind of flickering. If we render, still not exactly the most impressive thing, but here you can see this one's very white and these are a little bit duller. So it's almost as if you're doing like a Vegas sign and you want all the lights to just flicker very slightly. For this example, I'm just going to pretend that these light bulbs are the kind of frosted type, so we don't have to worry about making any glass and reflection, worrying about all of that stuff. Um, we're just looking at the MoGraph color shader, really. Um, but it would be nice if we had some illumination. So let's just hide this bulb glass. Select the light bulb null. If you press the shift key and come up and add in a light, creates this Omni. Okay, and maybe what we want to do here is just pull this up like so. If we switch to our side view, I'm going to unhide the glass again. There we go. We can just pull this up. So it's sort of sitting at the top here where the filament would be. And if we come back here, I'm going to set this light just to be a little bit warmer. Something like so. And the nice thing about this is that when we uh, use um, a cloner object with lights, the cloner itself will actually influence the lights as well. So now if we press play, hopefully you can see that. You can see that the um, the lights themselves are actually flickering as well. So they'll be flickering in time with the glass. And if we render this, you know, that's the result that we have. Of course, we probably want to have shadows. So I'm going to enable shadow maps and then render. And there we go. And you can see that we're now we're getting a little shadow cast from these base parts. Um, but of course, as soon as we... Um, unhide our bulb glass, then uh, the lights are going to be no use at all. So what we need to do is select our bulb glass, right click, let's come to the Cinema 4D tags that you can't see that, let's do it from the tags menu. Cinema 4D tags, add in a compositing tag and we just uncheck cast and receive shadows for the light bulbs themselves. Now when we render, you can see that we're getting the, the kind of result that we're after.
and you can always select this light and maybe switch to the shadows and set that to be a bit higher maybe with a high sample radius so you get a nicer and more accurate shadow map so now we've kind of created these simple flickery lights and the actual light itself is flickering very subtle effect um, but it's the kind of thing you don't want to overdo anyway let's take this one step further and well, let's just switch off this shader effector for a moment you can see how we, when we switch that off it gets much brighter um, and that's because this noise is making the light a little bit duller because it's got the gray in it um, what I'm going to do is select the cloner object itself choose MoGraph effector let's add in a random effector under the parameter tab we can disable position and let's enable the color mode okay so it's a bit full-on but you can see that it's affecting the actual lights themselves which is cool um, but uh, what I want to do here is actually come to uh, the effector tab uh, I want to reduce the <laughs> the kind of the color of these a bit I'm going to just switch to um, the unfold the minimum maximum and set the minimum to be naught and rather than using random if we use noise it's normally much subtler the colors um, and there you go like so I'm going to enable the indexed option makes them look a bit more colorful um, and rather than using global space which which is fine because the light bulbs aren't really going to move but we could use UV if we want to um, so it's based on the UVs of the the cloners the clones and now if we press play we're going to randomize those colors which could happen I guess could happen but what I really want is I want random colored lights and then I want to add the flicker on top so I'm going to set the animation speed to be zero so now when we press play they won't change at all and if we're not happy um, with this we could always choose a different random mode there's a few in here um, if we choose one of the steel types we could uh, you know adjust the seed value or maybe reduce the the maximum to reduce the, the saturation of the colors down I don't mind that um, I'm going to come to the parameter tab we've also got this use alpha strength at the moment it's disabled but if we enable that and with the shader effector and also the random effector what it does is it looks at the value that's being created and then it applies that to the alpha as well so it essentially make these colors slightly more transparent and there you go and you can see so now the colors are really subtle which is a bit nice pastel-y colors um, which looks quite nice if we enable our shader effector to add the flicker okay and you can see that's kind of working but I think if we um, select our cloner under the effectors tab we probably want to put the shader effector afterwards and there we go so that's working a lot nicer now the reason we were seeing it before is as I say the the random effector is adding a little bit of alpha to those colors so you're seeing the shader effector come through but now we've added the shader effector afterwards so it's kind of multiplying that on top of those colors um, and with the shader effector this alpha option is enabled by default if we switch that off it's just going to totally override and we won't see any of those colors but you can see that where we've added the random effector and the shader effector the brightness has really reduced down so you might want to come to your light and just uh, maybe increase this uh, maybe not quite that high Tim 135 maybe um, and with the light bulb itself maybe we just set that a little bit higher maybe 130 uh, you know obviously you can just play around with that but that just gives you another idea of how you might want to use the MoGraph color shader and we've used it in combination with the shader effector and some noise and the random effector to create these kind of flickering multicolored light bulbs um, pastel light bulbs you know maybe you want to go for the high saturated I'm at a fun fair look um, but that should give you some ideas of how you can use that in your projects.